knocking the teeth to talk, mate. Um, we're out of screen then, so we're yeah. a bit of a touch up. <laughs> start again. No, um, thanks for having me. That's I'm all right. Really excited. Let's see how you go, mate. They're pretty hard hitting questions, yeah, I'll be okay. honest, mate. So you, the first all question's right. actually about your dog. Oh, I caught <laughs> so that much grief about this dog. There's word about that you walk him only at night. Is there a reason behind that? I think that this is this myth is growing. The legend is <laughs> growing, but no, that's not true. I have walked. There was phases there where it was no good to walk during the day because it just caused that much grief. But no, he's good now. He's because he's, he's a dash hound, isn't he? Yeah, he's a dash hound. So <laughs> doesn't the um, ability to socialise is is not great. <laughs> but we're working on it. And uh, it's true that uh, you have had a muzzle on him on the occasion. Oh, this is Renee's fault. <laughs> I get done with that all the time, but this is pure, this is Renee. I'm putting that solely on her. <laughs> she stresses nice. one time. Now, one time we are down at the beach and he like bit a little kid. That's so, pretty bad. Yeah, That's so <laughs> she bought him a muzzle, but it's it's social suicide putting that thing on a dash yeah. hand. Oh, yeah. fair enough, mate. No, I know I don't have muzzles on my two dashes, but... <laughs> yeah, true, true. I probably should have got a second one, but it's not to be. That's all right. Um, actually, next one's pretty funny. So you were there the day Tony Lockett you know, broke his all-time goal kick yeah, record. Yeah, And you ran out on the ground, is that right? Yeah, from memory, I mean, I was pretty young then, but yeah, we used to go out on... Um, generally, it was on Sunday afternoons then with my granddad and my dad and watch from the noble stand yeah um so yeah i watched plugger play quite a bit as a kid and um yeah i was there at the scg when he kicked it pretty uh yeah. pretty telling moment i reckon that would be unreal yeah it's it's cool it's cool it's sort of obviously you don't see it much today but yeah um being a young kid and being able to run onto the ground it's a pretty cool feeling yeah, yeah. Oh, that's unreal yeah. i wish i i wish i would have been there for say like buddy's hundredth yeah that would have been i missed that i didn't i didn't go for that but i reckon that would have been unreal just to run on the ground really to just get, around it. <laughs> get yeah, amongst um, it it'd be interesting to see who like the next if it ever happens again or if the game changes yeah back to that but it's there it can it can be done 100 yeah. percent. so here that you are a bit of a cricketer back in your day or oh. or you attempted to be a cricketer yeah. you well you were in you were selected for the new south wales emerging blue squad yeah and you were alongside Pat Cummins. Tell us about that. How did you... Yeah. Um, we used to play each other a little bit in rep cricket. He played for Penrith and I played for Hornsby. Um, so we grew up playing each other. Um, he obviously is going on with it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we were playing him. We used to train out at the SCG and that, so I used to face him a little bit. He was bowling bouncers at, like, 12 years old. He was bowling absolute heat. So he actually sconned me once in the bouncers in the SCG nets, but... Yeah, I didn't. I didn't last much longer in cricket after that. Yeah, <laughs> batsman. Oh, yeah, more of a bowler towards the end. Yeah, just what you bowled? Oh, you bowled bowl bowl left arm. Just left arm slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sure, you got to use the height, get a bit of bounce in the pitch. I know that's what everyone used to say, and I'd be like, no, nah, I'm just sort of mad <laughs> still. Bowl um, tweakers. Yeah, a little like in swinging tweakers. Yeah. Oh, that's not real. He's uh, he's actually going on to do some some pretty good stuff. Now. Yeah, he's. Fair cricketer now. Yeah, so. he's doing unreal. Yeah. Um, you're obviously tall. That's a, that's a given. Cricket wasn't your sport. Basketball is definitely not your sport. No, like I, I know you jump. can swish a few, but no, it's not your sport. What yeah. uh, what brought you to, to AFL when you were growing up? Um, I was just really, it was just my close friends used to play AFL on a Sunday. And um, we had to play school sport on Saturdays. So I used to play rugby on Saturdays. And then just pretty much hang out with my mates. I decided to play AFL on Sundays. And then it sort of evolved from there. Um, they had a scholarship program that they used to run in Sydney for players who could link up with clubs and Collingwood did that to me which I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to go down there when I was younger so to be honest it wasn't really a pathway I was I was going for um, and just yeah I've got my close mates to thank for that because yeah it opened my eyes up to AFL like playing AFL I did really love the sport to watch but to actually play it and then yeah just evolve from there yeah how was it going down to Collingwood? Because I feel that Collingwood compared to the bubble here is completely different. Like, how did yeah. you find the Melbourne bubble once you go went from like Sydney straight into into Melbourne and then yeah. into like the hub of footy? Really? Yeah, I probably didn't have an appreciation for it because um, I didn't really know. I didn't really know much about Collingwood. I obviously knew that would be club, but I didn't. I didn't know how serious it was in Melbourne AFL as a whole. Just been a bit naive to it up in Sydney. Um, yeah, once you're in it, it's hard to escape. Um, yeah, it's everywhere you go, it, it's there. So 
Um, I guess moving up here, I really like, it's refreshing, you can get away from footy a bit easier. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed my time in Melbourne, it's a great city, but yeah, I'm really enjoying living up here now. Yeah, I feel like you always talk to blokes who have been in the bubble, either even like WA, yeah. Adelaide, and they all say like, it's so different when yeah. you're going from there up to here in terms of how much people like know about footy, talk about footy, like you just yeah. don't see it anywhere near as much. Yeah, it's so, it's so true, like coffee shops, um, just out and about, yeah, everyone sort of knows footy and wants to talk about footy, so yeah, it's, it's quite refreshing being up here, and um, yeah, obviously having the beach as well is a massive plus, so yeah. I'm in no rush to, <laughs> uh, rush to move anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of really inspired you, especially like when you're at Collingwood, but to obviously continue, because you had a bit, you know, a bit of a hard time in yeah. terms of getting games at Collingwood all the time and what, yeah. what kind of inspired you to kind of keep going and um, like pursue footy? I just think I had, oh, like when I got traded. Or, yeah, yeah, or both, um, yeah. I just, always, I sort of always believed in myself I could do it. I just needed a good run at it. And um, obviously you can see how well brody has gone now. He's um, a really good, obviously, quality ruckman in, in their team and in the competition. So it was probably time for me to go and... Um, I was given the opportunity to come up here and I really had to work for it in that first year to get my opportunity, but I was able to put a string of games together and then it sort of has evolved from there. So um, I sort of always had the self-belief, but I just, just needed to run at it, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Do you find, what type of goals do you reckon you had once you came up here, did you? Um, yeah, initially it was just to get a game. Get a game, it was, yeah. It was that simple. I was just so focused on, on trying to like fit in, I guess, at the start and then, yeah, just get games in. Um, yeah, and then you, know, you get a taste for that, and then it's like, what next? It's like, oh, now I want to try and compete with the best. So then you just, yeah, just build layers and layers on your performance. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Did you, um, obviously, like moving to the coast, it's never easy, like especially because you've got you've got a partner in, in Renee. Yeah. How did, how has she found moving up? Um, and you know, because you're moving your whole life yeah. essentially, and they almost have to toe the line, I guess, when they yeah. come up with you. So, it's, no, it's so it's so true. Footy can be so selfish. Yeah. Um, for us as players and um, yeah Renee's Renee first of all moved to Melbourne for me and then yeah. um, well she also had her things going on in Melbourne she just moved me she had uni and, <laughs> yeah. and her job and stuff down there and then um, obviously we came up here so she's she's moved twice and um, yeah she's been a really important part of my life and yeah she's really settled in up here now so she's got she's got a job that she really enjoys and she's starting to settle in and, and make some really good friends so um yeah, I've got a lot to be thankful for in terms of Renee and, and the role that she's played in my life. Yeah, 100%. Do you reckon if you were talking to yourself five years ago and seeing yourself now being like yeah. captain of an AFL club, um, you know, obviously like a number one ruckman, playing really good football, do you, you, know, do you reckon you saw that coming at all or has, has that been a bit of a shock um, to the system in, in what's come? Because I know, I, know, I don't know if leadership's always been something you strive yeah. for, but... Um, I think it's... If you asked me five years ago, no way. Yeah. I think at, at that stage, I was just trying to get the game at, at the pies. And yeah, if, even if you go back to when I first got drafted, I was all I wanted to do was just play one AFL game. So I think a little bit like anything, you get a taste for it and then you're like, all right, what's next? What's next? And never satisfied with, with where you're at. So um, yeah, five years ago, I probably wouldn't have thought about being captain or even in the leadership group. but now you've had a taste for it and, and you want to be the best at it and just keep evolving so yeah try not to ever get comfortable with that stuff what have you found about the captaincy the hardest part because there's obviously a lot that comes with it yeah um i just i, I find you just obviously you you're trying to impress and please everyone but yeah. sometimes you just got to make the call and and then just back yourself and and, and trust those around you um so i've struggled a little bit with delegation and I find we've spoken about this yeah. a few times. Yeah. So just um, yeah, just being a bit better at things like that, so it doesn't just all build up. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's always it's always the hardest part. You want yeah. to take on the world, and then yeah, yeah. We just want to see one trying to do the best job you can, but some sometimes you got to understand that you can rely on other people. I guess. So, yeah. Um, yeah, probably that. Have you found Have you found it having it with Dave, like the the co captaincy? Yeah. Have you found that that's made it probably a little bit more like easier for you being able to bounce off someone in the same position? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And Dave and I um, have a really good relationship off the field too. So 
we can just throw th different things at each other and, and, and yeah, I guess um, get each other's opinion and backing on things, which, which helps. And then the obvious one is you can just share the load with commitments outside of footy. So, no, it's definitely, it's been awesome to be able to share it with him. He's such a close mate. So, yeah. yeah, 100%. So moving back onto your social life, outside life. Yeah. You're a rugby league fan, obviously. Yeah. Newcastle fan? Yeah, Newcastle Knights, yeah. Who do you think um, has the best sidestep in the league? Oh, I think it's pretty obvious. You know, Caelan Ponga at the moment, he's down that left edge that he plays for Newcastle, steps back on the inside and scores a few tries. So I'd probably say him, he's right up there. Um, two of us are Sheck, plays for the Warriors, he's pretty handy. Um, yeah, those two probably stand out. Left edge, bro. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, so I just, <laughs> what was well, that I just learned that because I've been watching all the um, rugby league shows flat out. Yeah, um, with Origin being on, so you're really into it, yeah, now, you, just, you, like you follow rugby league, not well, fairly closely, don't you? Like week yeah, to week. Yeah, I quite enjoy the um, the shows and just the way they talk about they they talk about like their games. Obviously, so different to ours, but they simplify it heaps. Yeah, and I think that that's there's something in that. Um, and they just keep it really basic and just do the basics well. And I, I really like that about rugby league. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Who's uh, who's your tip for state of origin? Is well, that a, is that a blatant yeah, obviously? I think I'll just I'll just stick with New South Wales. I'll back them in. But do you, do you rate yeah. being across town? Like, yeah, I'm not too sure. I went to one in Melbourne and it was pretty cool to go to. Yeah, at Eddie Had Stadium. But I kind of like the idea of just keeping it. New South Wales in Queensland yeah, but right, I guess yeah. they're trying to grow the game so fair play to them but yeah I'd probably prefer the New South Wales or um, the Queensland so Queensland cool. just yeah two in one state each year and then just flip them you reckon you ever going to come over to the Maroons or not? I wouldn't have thought so nah <laughs> it was it was when I was a kid and we were losing every year I was tempted but uh, <laughs> my dad wouldn't let me do that I don't reckon it's, yeah, you can't be doing that mate no. oh thanks for uh Thanks, so, Witsy. Uh, yeah, no worries. Thank you for having me. Thanks for, for, having thanks me, for coming on. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks very much, too. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, mate.